Father Dave here. And I'm here with a son of a good friend of mine and the brother of what the world's most wanted man, perhaps. Yes. You that's can't right. say the world's most wanted criminal because he's never been officially accused or of anything, has he? No. But uh, Julian Assange, Julian's brother Gabriel, privileged to be with you, brother. Yeah, good to be here too. Thank you. Um, you're here in Sydney because we had the debut of, of the uh, movie uh, Ithaca, which is uh, ironically a movie about Julian, which actually never features Julian. Not that I've been able to see it yet, but can you tell us a little about the movie? And also why on earth you called it Ithaca, which uh, doesn't really give away what it's about. No. Um, well, you know, it's sort of the, the idea for the movie came in around 2019. Uh, when I went to see Julian at um, Belmarsh Prison, just outside of London, maximum security prison mm. uh, that he's been in coming on three years now. Uh, he was, he'd just been taken from the Ecuadorian embassy and um, put in this prison and he was on uh, suicide watch, which I didn't know at the time. Mm. And, you know, over the years I'd been to visit him, you know, in the embassy okay. and uh, you know, at Ellingham Hall where he was um, under house arrest. And at that point in 2019, I saw him in a state that I'd, I'd never seen him like that before. Uh, and I, I, I sort of left the prison that day thinking um, that I would, you know, there, there was a high likelihood that I wouldn't see him, uh, see him again. And that's when I started to think, you know, how can I, you know, how can I, what can I do? How can I join this fight to free okay. to free Julian and that's when we started thinking about how do we make a movie I'm a film producer yes and and we wanted to get a movie uh, to tell a different side of of the story because how a lot of people learn about Julian is through uh, through the media through the media headlines um, you know uh, things other documentaries that have appeared on you know ABC or on Netflix that are all sort of uh, very much from one point of view there's never never really been anything uh from from our side or from from the family's perspective this is look you've already answered one of the questions i was really curious about which was just in terms of your personal pilgrimage in all of this because i remember speaking to your dad years ago um you know oh, gabriel does his thing you know and, and gabriel's keeping his head down a bit in terms of the publicity surrounding julian but it was that point at which you saw him in Belmarsh Prison that was a turning point for you? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it, that's when you sort of, yeah, like John says in the movie, you know, Julian could no longer speak for himself, so he needs people uh, to speak for him, uh, which are John, which, you know, great advocates like John and, and, and his fiancée, Stella. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's the situation Julian is now. He, he, can't, uh, he can no longer speak for himself. He can no longer uh, you know, raise his voice. So he needs people uh, to do it for him. And that's where, you know, that's where John comes in. That's where Stella comes in and, and me. You know, we have that's a personal connection yeah. to Julian that's, um, you know, that other people don't have. So. You must have known it. I mean not wanting to probe you too deeply, but I assume you, you wanted to keep your head below the parapet and just get on with a normal life. But that was the point at which you thought you count the cost. I mean, you must have known this came at a cost personally. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't think of it in terms of, you know, cost to me or, or anything like that. I just sort of, you look, look for what you can do and what can be done and, and you just go out and uh, do it. And, and, you know, I think, uh, the responses that you get, you know, the responses we've had to the film, how it moves people and, uh, you know, it's, it's actually flipping people, you know, people who, uh, who haven't engaged with Julian's uh, plight or, or, or seen Julian as somebody, uh, you know, as a criminal. Um, yeah. They're coming out of the film now, uh, watch, after watching the film, they're coming out and they're being flipped. So that sort of, that response to, to the work that we're doing, uh, that's sort of, you know, that's the reward enough, really. I mean, okay. it's, yeah. So no doubt you've lost some friends, but you found you've made many more? Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say I've lost friends, no. Uh, I don't think I've lost any friends. Um, but 
but yeah, it, it certainly gained a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it made a lot of which friends. is encouraging. Yeah. So, so the, the theme of the of the, of the film, tell me, because I haven't seen it. Well, it's it's uh, a father's fight for his son okay. is the is the big theme uh, that that can you know anybody can connect with. Who wouldn't uh, you know if their son was in trouble? Who you know who wouldn't do anything in t to save their son? And so that's how we uh, joined John. You know, where our f our first scene is. Uh, John outside the prison where he's gone to see Julian and Julian asks him um, to come over and 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 work on this full time and and mm. from then we're launched mm. uh, on this journey that John is sort of like John's Odyssey where he travels around the world uh, you know um, coalescing these groups of people uh, groups of supporters um, you know raising awareness about Julian's case uh, Talking to politicians, talking to normal people, and and just following that, following his emotional journey really, mm. and through, through his fight, which is significant, isn't it? I mean, I saw, when I first met John, you know, I, I knew him as an activist for the cause, and then as leader of a political party at one stage, and then it wasn't until some years later that I actually met him together with Julian in the Ecuadorian embassy, and then saw him standing next to his son, and in that father-son role for the first time, which is, it's easy to forget that, that um, this is a deeply personal issue for him as it is for you. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you, the, the movie follows John and follows you. No, not, not so much me, but Stella is in it as well. Okay. Yeah, so when we started filming, Stella was still, um, you know, a sec Julian's secret family. Uh, Still, sorry, was part of like was a secret. Julian, yes, yeah, yes, but, yes, yes. Um, and uh, we started filming with John, I think, in twenty nineteen, at the end of twenty nineteen, and then uh, Stella's name it was in some court documents, and the judge refused uh, to withhold her name from the uh -huh. court documents, and so uh, she was faced with this, uh, you know, this threat that I, I now have to. Um, you know, come out and 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 people are going to find out about me and and all and all these sort of things. I mean, you have to think this is in the uh, this is just after all this um, stuff's gone on in the embassy mm. uh, where they were being surveilled. Um, uh, you know, there were threats against Julian's life, yeah. uh, threats of kidnapping. Yes. So Stella was for her own safety, want and for her children's safety, wanted to remain. Um, you know, sort of remain in hiding, but she was forced by these court documents yes. uh, to sort of come out. And now she's, you know, I guess you've seen her now. She's such a powerful, powerful advocate for Julian. Uh, Which is wonderful. I mean, yeah, I remember we managed to keep Stella's name out of things for a long time. Yeah, we were quite successful right. at that, which was great. And then all of a sudden there was a name in the papers and I didn't even realise that was through the work of the judge yeah that's right that they they you know they refused to withhold her name and so you know that still was faced with this this choice and she's an unlikely activist as well just just you know you know it's similar to john you wouldn't expect him to be uh you know he's not a natural he doesn't he's not sort of a natural activist in no, a way no uh, he has a certain manner uh very softly spoken um, but it seems to, you know, he engages people in a different way than, say, yes. a politician he, or something. He's not like. the classic fiery prophet archetype, is he? No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. And that sort of works, uh, works in his favour. Um, you know, I think people see in the film, he, you know, he has this uh, presence that engages people in a different way. Yeah, he's a very softly spoken man, but uh, very engaging and very thoughtful. And that will come out, no doubt, in the movie. Yes, it does. Yeah. Now, you haven't told me why you called it Ithaca. Oh right. Yes, of course. So, um, you know, someone said something interesting to me last night. They said, "Well, you know, Ithaca is this uh, is the home of Odysseus, and he leaves Troy, okay. um, and you know, it's the basis. Of, that's the Homer's Odyssey." And uh, but someone said to me yesterday is. You know, Ithaca is an island in 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 Greece, mm. and someone said, "Oh, is Australia is Australia Ithaca? <laughs> you know, is that um, you know?" And Julian is trying to come home, mm. 
Um, so, I, you know, I thought that was a nice interpretation of it. But there's a poem uh, uh, by, by a Greek poet called Cavafy, um, which John listens to when he's on the road, when, all, when everything, uh, you know, when things aren't going right. It's a, uh, and its interpretation of Homer's Odyssey is it's about the journey, not the destination. Um, and it's what, you know, what we do and learn and the people we meet um, along the way that makes us, uh, you know, full and rich. Uh, and it's not the destination of where we arrive that, that is the sort of... It's the journey. Yeah, it's the journey. Mind you, it's a chilling title too, because when um, Odysseus returns to Ithaca, I think his own mother doesn't recognise him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so there's all these... Um, yeah, the, we trust that's not going to be the case for Julian when he eventually makes it back. No, I mean, I hope not. I mm. hope not. Um, but, you know, it is, it, it is for Julian an odyssey. You know, this has gone on for 10 oh, years. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And, you know, he's met so many challenges along the way. And, he, you know, he's, he's uh, so strong, uh, so principled that, uh, you know, I think any other person might not have been in the position he's in now uh, in that, um, they might not have been able to survive. Mm. Uh, mm. But Julian is, um, you know, I'm in awe of his strength and, and he's, um, you know, such a principled man that, um, you know, I think that's why people are attracted to his... What, to what his keeps thoughts. him going, do you think? I think, uh, you know, hearing about all this stuff that uh, is going on all over the world, that keeps him going, knowing okay. that there's all that support there. Knowing he's not alone. Yeah, knowing you're not alone. You know, mm. he's one man in this cell and, uh, you know, fighting against this huge adversary. But yeah. but knowing that, um, you know, all these support groups around the world, all these activist groups, all these NGOs, um, you know, editorial boards of newspapers saying that uh, all this should be dropped. Mm. Uh, you know, mm. there's all his family all fighting for him. I think uh, that really keeps him keeps him going. Well, and he said that in the past. So yeah, God think, bless him. Yes. I mean, there's Julian the man and his personal struggle, and then there's Julian's work, which has not been the focus of your movie. I appreciate, but you can't really separate the two, can you? And um, no. The reason he's hunted the way he is is because of his work and what he's published as a journalist. Um, it seems to me in many ways that his revelations have never been more relevant than they are right now. I mean, I often quote Julian saying we're, we're living in the last free generation, you know, yeah. and when we see the sort of totalitarianism coming into play around us, it seems like um, his prophecies are being fulfilled. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to make any comment on that or whether you've heard Julian make any comment on, on the way things are going in the world at the moment. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, I often say, you know, what's happening to Julian is like another revelation, another WikiLeaks type revelation. You know, this persecution uh, of Julian has shown us all, uh, you know, how deep the corruption uh, actually goes and, 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 and the lengths that they will go to, uh, you know, persecute anybody who goes against, uh, you know, the power structure yes. and, uh, you know, the, the different institutions that they're willing to, um, you know, exploit and, and show to be corrupt, you know, like the Swedish Prosecuting Service, you know, the UK Judiciary, the mm. Crown Prosecuting Service, the DOJ in the US, you know, the CIA, the FBI, all these huge organisations, all these sort of uh, parts of our society that people are supposed to uh, you know, we're supposed to trust and believe that they have our interests at heart, uh, have been shown in the persecution of Julian mm. to be ultimately, um, you know, ultimately be corrupt. And, and that's, to me, I think that's a very interesting part that, you know, WikiLeaks and the work that they've done is, is incredible. But uh, what's often missed is that uh, the persecution of Julian uh, is another uh, revelation. Yeah, same theme. I mean, we used to once upon a time have faith in the independence of the media, and then at least we had faith in the independence of the judiciary. Yeah. But yeah, faith is failing. Yeah, that's fast, right. isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a depressing scene that we're looking at worldwide, but we're still. I mean, I'm still holding out real hope for Julian, and indeed, if we can 
bring him home, we might see some of these other uh, structures start to fissure a little, if not crumble completely. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, a great comparison is Daniel Ellsberg, who, you know, 50 years ago um, released the, or leaked the Pentagon Papers. papers. So in his uh, prosecution, uh, the, the plumbers who were, you know, this uh, group of the uh, group of sort of, I don't know, like mercenary or investigators that Nixon was using um, spied on his psychologist and, hmm. and his case was, was thrown out on the, on the basis that, you know, the, he could not get a fair trial because the prosecution were spying on his psychologist. Right. But this fed all the way up to the plumbers who were part of, uh, who became part of Nixon's impeachment. So you can see the, you know, this line of sort of corruption led all the way to the top. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, if, if Julian's persecution has the same effect, you know, there will be, there will be more uh, revelations, just like in September when uh, there were 30 uh, sources from within the intelligence community in the US that um, confirmed that the CIA had plots to kidnap and murder Julian, there will be more mm. of these revelations. Mm. And I think, uh, you know, there, there will be more uh, corruption exposed and, and, and yeah, could, could go all the way to the top, just like and Daniel could reach a tipping point? Yeah, yeah, I think I so. Mean, th this is the thing which gets me, is I get the feeling that the powers that are, are um, out to destroy Julian are getting more arrogant if I could put it that way. I mean, once upon a time, they used to try and justify Julian's persecution through developing a narrative that he was a rapist and a, a criminal responsible for the deaths of lots of people. And all those things have um, fallen apart and been shown to be completely vacuous. Mm. Now they don't even seem to be trying to justify their persecution of him. They're just letting rip. And it's coming out that, yes, they're planning on killing him. And, yes, and there's no apologies coming. I mean, they seem to be increasingly brazen in their in their attacks on him, do do you think eventually that will lead to some sort of implosion? Yeah, uh, I I believe so. Yeah, because they're just you know they're smashing up all these, uh, you know, the greatest parts of you know society really, and it's they're just this sort of huge blind giant, and you know just knocking things over yes. here and there, like just trying to get this one man who's who's in the in you know. He's a single man in a, in a, in a cell and, and this huge giant, um, you know, it's that David and Goliath. Yes. This huge blind giant is just destroying everything around it. Uh, and, and while Julian just, you know, wastes away in a prison cell. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think that's why Julian's case is so emblematic because, you know, if we get him out, you know, we can start to restore people's faith in, in democracy again. And in democracy, in the judiciary, in yeah, the media. Yeah. yeah. And, and justice, in... that there is justice in the world. And, and um, you know, we're, at the moment, it's, it's hard to, you know, it's... It's hard it, to see that. Yeah, yeah. As the gospel writer says, the light shines in the darkness. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and Julian, in many ways, is that light shining in the darkness. And that's why it's so important, so important that we keep, keep the fight up. Yeah. That's right. And yeah, I mean, I pray for him every day and just, I, it must be enormously difficult to, under the pressure he's under. But as you say, the beauty of it is he has good friends and family around him. Yourself, his dad, his mum, and uh, millions of supporters worldwide who still choose to believe in freedom and justice. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Thank you for your work, brother. Thanks. God bless you. Thank you too, Father Dave. It's good. <laughs> God strengthen you, mate. Yeah, thanks.